Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we welcome you to the Lord's house for worship this morning. And we're asking those who are visiting to sign the guest register out on the narthex. Uh, we do celebrate Holy Communion today. All in the service this morning, coffee will be served in the fellowship hall and an invitation for all to stay for a time of fellowship together. Uh, just uh, take a little away from the announcements they give me. Uh, my name is Hans Sackerson. I am a retired ELCA pastor living in Millbank now. Uh, I served in uh, Clear Lake uh, for about 12 years, and uh, my previous ministries were mainly West River, and then my first call was about three years in Broadus, Montana. So, um, overall, I remember the day I retired was 34 to the 34 years from the day that I was ordained to my retirement. So, I have a little experience, I guess. <laughs> Um, and uh, welcome, it's always good to be here and meet new friends uh, in Christ. So, uh, also I'll continue with uh, today's KDIO radio broadcast mm -hmm. is sponsored by your gifts to the Endowment Fund. Today's lecture is Steve Winther, and I'd like to thank him for that. I um, would also like to ask, just for my practical matters, I'm assuming with the uh, microphone over at the pulpit, that's where you will read the lessons from. Okay, um, and then I'm going to ask, since I have this mic on and that mic is on, going to be on, does that ever give any problems? Because I can't turn that mic off when I get up there close. We'll, we'll find out if it does. <laughs> I, I'm quite, I've had quite a few different experiences with microphones. So, um, uh, please check your bulletins for any other announcements. Uh, is there anything that wasn't mentioned here or maybe should be brought up today? Any other further announcements? Okay, seeing none, then I'm going to ask uh, you to please stand if you are able for the confession of uh, confession and forgiveness of sin. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take just a brief moment to reflect in our hearts um, and confess individually those sins we know we ought to confess to God before we join in the corporate procession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are gone of sin and cannot bear hell. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done now. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. But the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will. Receive the absolution as if from Christ Himself. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for His sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is open our eyes, Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, 
Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, you will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. The psalm reading is found in your bulletin as you read Psalm 130 responsibly with the bold letters. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Spirit. 
Well, then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and brother, my brothers? Looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. This was my daughter, Sarah. She was a model for a while. So, 
We have lots of pictures and I just enjoy them and I just want to show them there because I love all my family and I like to brag and show them off a little bit and get that because family is very important for us. God gives us these things like aunts and uncles, you got cousins and you got uh, uh, cousins you get. When I used to go back home, I had so many people I was related to in Buffalo, South Dakota that uh, when I took my wife there for the very first time, she couldn't believe because I introduced everybody as my cousin. <laughs> but that's how small towns are. Now Jesus emphasized family and he wanted to too. But what does it mean for us? Now, we're going to go, you're going to go to vacation Bible school, right? And you're going to learn what it's like to be in God's family. Because Jesus brings us into God's family and he said and uh, he said some different things now how did you get started if you can look up here how was your first started in God's family and probably none of you remember that and maybe I think probably most of you were that but when you were baptized you ought to ask your parents what was it like when I was baptized but then there's another thing that Jesus says. Who is my brother and my brother and my sisters? Those who do the will of God. What do you think the will of God is? It's simply to believe and have faith in Jesus. And you're going to learn about that in Vacation Bible School this week. You're going to learn what it is to believe in Jesus and have faith. And so this week I hope you pay attention. And I hope that that helps you. So let's uh, let's share a prayer and then you can all sit back down, okay? So you repeat after me. Okay, dear God, dear God, thank you for letting us be part of your family. Thank you for letting us be part of your family. Help us to do what you want us to, to do. Help us to do what you want us to do. And to love one another as brothers and sisters. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, you can be seated. Thanks for coming up, and I think we're going to continue with some special music. <laughs>
And my friends, I bid you grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Um, I can just about see now. I really haven't had a study group that I've participated in for these uh, uh, sermon messages, but I can just about hear pastors as we gathered together and read that out loud. Wow, there's a lot going on there. What do you do with all of that? You know. Well, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the mothers and brothers. Uh, you have vacation Bible school going on today, and I think that's uh, a good opportunity. I, I'm really quite impressed with your decorations around the church and everything. Um, a lot of hard work on parts of both uh, both churches, I'm sure, in getting all this set up. But today, is, uh, the week, I hope, is about uh, what is it to be God's family? What is it to be the mother and the brothers and sisters of, of Jesus and whatnot? Because he talks about that. Um, now, one incident, if you go to 31, it says, When his mother and brothers came, they were standing outside and sat and called him. Now, I've read different things and talk about what's going on there, what are they doing. I think some of his mothers and brothers, one of the big things is they were afraid that uh, the Pharisees and the leaders, the Sadducees, etc., were going to go after him. And so they were trying to get him out of that situation. They are probably trying to protect him. Now some scholars think that maybe they thought that their own uh, brother, their man, his, Mary's own son, was going a little bit uh, crazy at that time. He had lost a little bit. But uh, Jesus begs to differ with that. The crowd's sitting around and, and they say, your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. But he says, who are my mother? Who are my brothers? Who's my sisters? He says, whoever does the will of God is brother and sister and mother. Now I remember an old story because that's talking a lot about support and people who were there for you, because they were there to support Jesus. Now, there's a story, a little cute story, about a spider. He lived in a house, and he was off in a little corner where he wasn't being noticed much, and he came down on his little web, and he attached it to the ceiling, and he came down, and he set it up there, and he set up a nice little home there, all spun around and kept in really nice balance, around that web, about uh, sitting there and watching what was going on, and he might have a little trap for the flies here and bugs here, have a little something over here that kind of balanced everything out. And he had a really nice little home. And he was going, and he was just uh, uh, watching things, and he could watch, uh, watch people in the house and what was coming and going without really being noticed much. And that was great for him. But he had one real problem. When he was moving around that web in his whole globe, which he was calling home, there was that one strand, one thick strand right in the middle that he always had to go around, and it was always in his way. And finally, after a certain amount of time, he said, I know what I do. And he went up and he cut it. And sure enough, crashing to the floor. And the end of that spider happened. And it happened because he forgot that he was supported from above. He forgot what that web was about. And that's really, I think, what Jesus is talking to us about in our last day. We're not only supported by God from above, but the family and the members he gives us come from above as well. In our conflicts, and our desires, and our sin, we easily forget that our support comes from above. That's where God is from. And I believe the lessons that we're going to be taught, I hope they're done in Vacation Bible School, talk about the support that we have from God, and what we learn, and how that supports our own faith. Now, I think in life, and I would like you to think about the people in your life that have influenced you in your own Christian faith. 
and not just reading about Jesus. Now, uh, think of those people in ruins. Now, one of the first people I think of is uh, my dad's Aunt Irene, my great Aunt Irene, and I call her my dear Aunt Irene, because she was so faithful. Now, I didn't know her so well. I knew who she was, and I visited her place. She occasionally babysat us when we were really young. But I found out later, when I returned to church, and she started inviting me over, and we became very close and very dear, that she was really the one behind my parents making sure, she made sure that not only did us kids get baptized, because my parents, though they went to church on occasion, weren't really what you would call solid church goers. But my great aunt Irene made sure that they did things to get us baptized. Make sure we went to Sunday school. Make sure we were confirmed and whatever. And then she said, I pray for you every day. Every day. So she was one of those people that was a support from above. One of those people in my life. How many of those people do you have in your own life? Uh, she was one who took that and, not, and went beyond just uh, beyond, went beyond just praying for it taking action in the family. But she's also one that I loved dearly when I became a pastor. Because uh, one of the things she said, you know, so many people get angry at the pastor or something when they leave the church. Well, let me tell you, tell you something, Hans. I've never yet met the pastor that can drive me away from my church. <laughs> what an influence. What an influence. And I gotta say, she was so great. I had another guy. Al Geis was an old bachelor. And I met him one day, he was out uh, in the yard, he had retired. He was renting a place from uh, one of my neighbors who was also kind of a cousin to me. And he was out there with one of those old uh, sickles. Sides, and he was just cutting the grass and the hay. And he was doing it. And he, at that time, I thought he must be pretty anxious. He's probably younger than me right now. But he was cutting it. But the thing about it was, we visited a little while, and then I'd come by, and I remember, especially Sunday nights, but a lot of nights, I'd come by and I'd hear hymns on the, on the radio. And there was Al singing along with him. And then when he came to the door, when I knocked, he would start sharing about, oh yeah, those are so uplifting, I love to sing with them. And he shared a lot of his experiences in life. And he shared what the Lord meant to him. Another one of those supports from above that God provided. And I have a lot of them. Terry, a close friend in the Navy, was turned around when he was accepted Lord, as they said. And, uh, um, Jack Hill was a friend and a pastor and a mentor, Lutheran pastor. And one of the things he said to me, and he always said, when you get to be in the pulpit and you get to be a pastor, keep asking people, how is your walk with Christ? How is that? How is your support? Are you walking well with Christ? And try to support people in that. And I had other people, uh, John and Betty Neamey from my church in Buffalo. They were good friends of my parents. And they helped us through the seminary and helped pay and, and helped finance some of that. Now I mention all of these people because I was asking them to write about my faith journey and write and give people that it influenced us into Christ. But these are people that influenced me. And I bet if you really thought, and if I went and did the old interview, remember, uh, any of you watch the game shows, they say, tell me a little bit about yourself. If I said, tell me about a person. Tell me about someone who's really influenced you in Christ. I think you would come up with someone and say, there is a person that was there. There was the one that was a support from above for me. There was one. And, uh, as I looked around the church family, I think that everyone, every church I've been at, 
has had people like that, have been that like that for me. And I hope on occasion I was that for them. Now, I think as we go back to John sometimes, he says, love one another as I have loved you. The word from the scripture about Jesus, when he says, who are my brothers and sisters? Who is my mother? Whoever does the will of God, whoever believes, whoever takes that baptism you have and takes it and says it's not just something that was accomplished and now I can go on through life, but it's the beginning of my spiritual adventure. It's the beginning of a new life that I have in Jesus Christ, not just then, but each and every day. So, why do we listen and what benefit or reason do we have from people? I believe it's quite simple. And it's quite simple and going to be expressed. Uh, Acts 11, 14. Uh, if you read that, he, said, uh, he tells the people, I will give you a message by which you and your household will be saved. And someone will come and explain. Jesus knew that there are differences in people. And yet they cannot overshadow the purpose of the church and the purpose of God's word in there. Now we are tempted in relationships today because relationships today that I have seen, they're defined by so many different things in the world today. Casual sex is very much rampant in there. We have irresponsibility and selfishness of what's in it for me. Boy, I almost hate to say this, and I don't want to accuse anybody that's in the political field, but uh, it seems like what I'm seeing a lot in the national anyway, is both parties are in a what's in it for me type of mode, and not an old, uh, I always say what we need now is some statesmen and stateswomen to say what's in it for the nation what's good for us. But that's what the thing is. And that's what Jesus said, whoever does the will of God is my mother, brother, sister. Relationships are like that. As closeness and friendship with Christ come and it grows, we don't always need to hear words, but we know that support is there. Have you ever had a friend in Christ Someone who's maybe there for you, and you just knew, I don't always say something, and maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's another friend, but there was an understanding and knowledge that that person was going to be there for you. You know, sometimes uh, uh, there was a little boy that was in the uh, cave. And uh, you could say it was one of the caves we had back in the Black Hills or whatever, Mammoth Cave or something. And uh, they wanted to show them how dark it is without the, uh, without the lights on. Well, they turned the lights off and inside the cave, if any of you have been in one of them, it is pitch black and you can hold your hand in front of your face and you can't see anything. It's nothing. There's no light whatsoever. But the little man, maybe six to eight years old, said, Daddy, take my hand. And his dad says, I'm right here for you. He says, Dad, I can hear you, but I want to feel you. And sometimes we have those friends that we just know, and we feel their support constantly. And you can probably name them in your hearts, and maybe we ought to say a brief prayer of thanksgiving that they were made there. So Jesus said, Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And that, I think, is following the command, love one another. Because we abide in God simply by taking his hand and following. And he provides to all these people to be part of our lives, to be that support from above. Because that's really what we in the church are about and what Christ is for us. Amen. And let's continue with the uh, Savior like a shepherd leaders.
those who are able to please uh, stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of He was received by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by Adam and Mary. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again.
time will ask the advocates to collect and present the offering as we stand.
us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. For those watching online, the body of Christ given to you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated, and I invite the communion assistants to come forward as we sing Lamb of God. And before we sing Lamb of God, uh, I'm going to tell you, I think how they do it here, I don't know how many from First English, you know, uh, and I'm going to tell you what I think they do, and then they'll correct me if I'm wrong. Okay? Uh, as you know, we will serve the bread, okay, and uh, do we have one or two stations? Did we have one station? One station, and then you will receive a cup, and they will pour into that cup the wine, as I say, the blood of Christ shed for you. So, uh, just to make you aware of that. Now, what we do is the, in the ELCA practice of communion, so I invite all persons confessing faith to come and join us at the table. Come, and I'm all over.